Welcome again to Grace Believers Bible Study. I want to thank everybody for showing up today. And all the guests, Jim and Sherry, yes, wonderful. Uh, today we got a, a guest speaker. It's been a while, Dave, I since know. you've been up been here. been on the road. You've been in Texas and everywhere else, filming and so forth. But uh, today we got Dave Barnes coming out of Pensacola, Florida. Come on up, Dave, right. preach to us. Now, I'm supposed to figure out how to use this little step. What is this thing for? Get it out of the way. Make me taller. Yeah, I got it. If I keep my right All right, got it. It's, it's a bet. That's it. For milking cows. Got it. No problem. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. A couple weeks ago, I was thinking while messages were going on, I said, you know what we haven't done in a while? Is really talk about how lucky we are to have the salvation that we have and the joy of that because we get so wrapped up in the world. I mean, look at Israel today. You look at the world. Everything's terrible. Everything's negative. Everything's a disaster. And it's a very sad place to be right now. It is a very, very sad place to be. Let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to share the love of Christ, to help others see it, to help others understand what salvation is, and to enjoy that life, get rid of the negativity, and express the love we have for you and the world. In your name, amen. amen. So the, recently, I saw something on the internet, so it must be true, right? Um, <coughs> they said, what's more important, thinking positively or getting rid of negative thoughts? What do you think the answer is? Anybody else see that? It's more important to get rid of the negative thoughts. Yeah, the positive stuff will take care of itself. I have a theory that life goes on. The good days take care of themselves. If you can manage the bad days, then everything else is good. It's really that simple. And we try to make it more difficult. And there's a lot of people out there full of stress, a lot of people out there full of anxiety, whether that's personal, family, financial, whatever it might be. And we lose sight of the joy we have in our eternal position. If we're sitting in God's family, it doesn't get any better than that. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what kind of medical things you've been through. I didn't do bunches of them. I'm still going through them. <laughs> yeah, Irma's shaking her head. But you know what? Life is good. So let's look at our paper here, and we're going to begin to study that a little bit. Too many people focus on the wrong area in their spiritual life, expecting some blessing from God to make them feel good or joyful. How many times have you done that in your past? God, if you just take care of this, I'm going to be really happy. <laughs> We've all done it. Let's be honest. You know, I got this problem. Solve it for me, and I'm going to feel, feel a lot better. <laughs> Yep, this is a sad state of affairs, leaving most people unable to share the joy of their salvation with those around them. Do you reflect the love of Christ to the world? When you're out there, do you help other people? Do you do things? Do you solve problems for people? Do you care about people? All those aspects of your life reflect the love of Christ. And if you're doing that, people will look at you and they go, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with them? That's kind of weird because they don't normally see that. We have the opportunity to do that. Because we're set for eternity. If you're a new creature in Christ, you're in the best place in all of history. I'm going to read that again. If you're a new creature in Christ, you're in the best place of all of history. You are a wonderful position to spend eternity with God, who has set up a program for you to reconnect with him. I had somebody ask me recently, why did God make evil? Well, he made evil so we would know the difference. And he made Jesus so we could reconnect with him. It wasn't like he left us hanging there. He gave us an opportunity to get back. And that's what Christ is all about. Um, this is the amazing position that we should never lose sight of and focus on in our daily lives as well. Now, who actually prays every morning? Eh, I don't, sorry. <laughs> Irma does. She does all the praying for me. I get out of bed and start working or doing stuff. I'm glad you do. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. Give me a second to flip the, as, as, as Scott would say, I hear the pages rattling. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. Here we go. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's a pretty nice place to be in. All that past negativity goes away. You don't have to deal with it. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled to us by himself, excuse me, us, us to himself, by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, verse 19, I like. This is a really strong verse for me. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, 
not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. God was in Christ on the, on the cross. He felt the pain. Some people, we can argue that if we want, I don't care. I believe he did. I believe he was there because he loved us. And he went through that because he loved us. And it doesn't get any more personal than that. That's why our relationship with God is a personal relationship. It's not a performance-based relationship. We don't do this and this and this and this. And bingo, we get blessed. Doesn't work that way. We do things because of what God has already done for us. If you're a new creature in Christ, you're standing perfected before God. Think about that. Can you be any happier? You are perfected before God. Yeah, you might have another 30 years in this life. I'm 66. I might have another four years the way my body's falling apart. But you know what? Eternity is going to be wonderful. And that's a long time. Now, Bob here just turned 90. I am, I'm never going to get there, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, the point is, the future is bright. Amen. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. And we, we lose focus on it because we get so wrapped up in everything else. And we need to do that. Look, I mean, look, look at this verse closely. God was in Christ reconciling the world. It doesn't get any more personal than that. And God reconciled the world so that you, through your faith, had the opportunity to come back into God's family for eternity. Okay? We fell apart. Adam, boom, gone. With Christ, we come back. Opportunity set up for us. This is not just a good idea for living today, but an eternal position full of joy and happiness. If you fail to see this, you're missing out on one of the most important elements of your salvation. Let's look at how our salvation happens, how simple it is, and yet so complicated for most people. People make salvation complicated. Religion makes salvation complicated. They want to add to it this and this and this and this. And when that all gets done, then what happens? Oh, uh, you might be saved. Maybe not. Maybe you got to do this still. Maybe you got to. How many people lived through anxiety before you understood your salvation? I know Irma did. I know everybody else did. I was very young, so I don't remember. I was like 15 when I got this message and understood it. So I'm sure I had some anxiety before that. In fact, I know I did. I was fearful the guy was going to bust my car because I was chasing girls, and that wasn't healthy, <laughs> you know? So that was going to be my punishment. My car was going to get broke because of what I, my focus was on. At any rate, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It is simple to be saved. It is not complex. It is simple to have the peace and joy for eternity that's available to you. It's not something that takes rocket science to understand. Let's take a look at some of these verses. We're going to go through 17 through 19. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Oops, wrong place, sorry. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you also have received, and wherein ye stand. Okay, what is that gospel? By which you are saved, and keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. So he said, hey, pay attention to this. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He went to the cross for our sins. That's the first point. And that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Now, what did that all mean? Let's go to another verse here. Romans chapter 4, 24. Uh, through Romans 5, 1. Give you a chance to flip the pages. This is a simple thing. I, I, I should draw, I should draw the, the little picture that we draw up every week. There's the cross, and there's Jesus. I don't know why we do that, but that's Jesus. Anyway. <laughs> he died. I know was buried, was resurrected for our justification. See, the resurrection gives us justification when we believe it. You really can't see that, Dave. Put it black. Every, everybody's a critic. <laughs> All right, he died, buried. What's that? Crucified. Okay, got it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. He did die. You can do your own. All right, thank you. <laughs> if you'd like to come up and teach, we'll sign the time up for you, no problem. Um, the point is, he went to the cross and he did that. And then he was buried, and then he rose again for our justification. If he had not risen again, we wouldn't be justified. We couldn't, we couldn't buy into that and get it. But that's what happened. Trouble connecting to the internet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> See, nobody wants to hear me this morning. Let's go to Romans chapter 4, verse 24, to Romans 5, 1. Thank you, Bob. I have, I have one, one person in the crowd that likes my... That's right. I'm kidding, no problem. 
Here we go. But for, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that, was ra that raised up Jesus the Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Simple, simple, yet people make it difficult. 5.1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is that simple. Amen. You believe it, and it becomes yours. You believe it and you're placed into the body of Christ stand perfect before God. Don't add to it. Don't get all wrapped up in all the stuff that religion tries to teach you. They are, in, they are intending to do the right thing, but they're totally lost. I don't want to be mean to other people and other religions. I want to know that they're, they're just messed up. Okay? And we can help them. We, if we were reflecting the love of Christ to the world, we have friend, I have friends that are religious, one of my new employees. Spent a bunch of time, he had to drive with me to Dallas and back, guess what? He's in the car, <laughs> he's gonna hear this stuff. We have a long talk. His father is a pastor. His cousin is a pastor. Yet he doesn't fully understand salvation. It's complicated for him. And we're talking and we're talking and we're discussing it. Did he have a Bible so he could keep the scripture? No, we were driving, yeah, no Bible. But we'll, we'll get around to that, no problem. He's open to talking. That's good. You know, we had a good conversation. Everything was good. Yeah, it's a good start. He's a wonderful kid. Kid, he's 40, so I don't know. He's, he's, he's sort of a kid. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Bob. I feel like a little guy. The point is this. If you share the love of Christ, and he loves working for our company because the attitude in the company is one of positivity. The attitude in the company is sometimes when my employees, my son and some of the other people, start getting down about something, I go, stop. There's no reason to do that. We get to do wonderful jobs. We get to get paid to do what we love to do. What's your problem? Let's get positive here. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> and they figure it out. Reflect the love of Christ and people will look at you differently. Okay? That doesn't mean you don't joke. I joke a lot. I step on my toes a lot too. But the reality is I have the love of Christ. And that's what drives me. And that's what gives me opportunities. And that's what I try to take advantage of. It's really that simple. I've got written down here. We'll see where I'm at here before I get lost here. I'm all over the place. Oh. Five, one. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Got it. Salvation is re reconnection to God is very simple. Religion often creates problems by adding works to the action. Our focus needs to be on what God has done for us and enjoy the peace of that position. When we have that, we become motivated because of what God has already done for us. I do nothing to win favor with God. I stand perfected before him. I do things because of what he's done for me. It's really that simple. And when you do that, you give away the love of Christ. And it's a lot of fun. I have a great time helping people and doing things and whatever I can do. Sometimes I can do a little bit. Sometimes I can do a lot. Whatever the case may be. And do sometimes people take advantage of it? Yes, but that's not going to change me. I'm going to still reflect the love of Christ to the world. God has blessed me and let's go do it, you know. It's as simple as that. Um, Second Corinthians. Verses 5 through, uh, five, excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. <laughs> this is what happens to us. When we understand that gospel and accept that gospel, the simplicity of it, it becomes ours. And when it becomes ours, we are set for eternity. It says, now that we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. For he hath made us to be sin for him, excuse me, he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. It's an amazing offer that changes everything. And notice I got the and capitalized there. And everything in your eternity as well. It doesn't just change your life now. Eternally, you're set to go. You are good to go. I know Irma almost had a crash in the car a few years back, and all she said was, just don't make it hurt. <laughs> you know? I do too. I don't like pain. But the reality is when our time is up, it is up, and we're gone, and uh, eternity is a whole lot better. It's going to last a lot longer. <laughs> That's for sure. Yep, long time. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. Let's go there a second. Understand what he does for us. Understand what he did for us. Understand our position in Christ. And of course, get all teared up and blow your nose. Okay. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 through 10. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Do you believe that? Do you understand that? Man, do you feel special? I certainly would. 
For scarcely for a religious man one will die, yet for adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Wow, done. You believe, you're saved. It's really that simple. Don't make a complex. What? Yes, somebody, thoughts? If somebody jumps at you, just share it, okay? For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we should be saved by his life. What a great thing to have. These are simple verses. We talk about them a lot. Do you enjoy your salvation? This message is to get you to focus on the right place for a bit. Forget about the negativity of the world. Things are not going well in the Middle East, that's for sure. Who knows what's going to happen next? You know. The nice part about the Bible, it tells us half our 25% of the Bible is telling us the future. Yeah. We're going to get there. Salvation is a gift, not a reward for performance. Get that through your head and share that with other people. So many other people are like, well, I'm not good enough for God. I'm not good enough for this. I can't do that because I did this. Or that. Well, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what your history is. There's nothing you could have done that's going to stop you from accepting the finished work of Christ. But you. You can certainly do that to yourself. You can say, ah, I must not be worthy, blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. You stand perfected before God, and that's what he had. Jesus did not come to, like, make a blip in history. He came to reconcile the entire world back to God. That's a big event. The whole world was lost. And he came and said, let's do it. Let's get back to God. If you don't want to participate in that, that's your choice. But that's the reality. And it's that simple. Yep, it's absolutely free. It's a gift. Um, all the performance necessary was done by God on the cross. And we have to ex accept that. It is, as, it is as simple as that. Sometimes I get the words wrong. You guys understand. Let's go to Romans chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. Are you following me on this? Are you following me on how important it is to be full of joy? Even when you have a difficult time in life. We're going to get to some of those verses too. Life is not perfect. But when we are in heaven, it will be. And you'll all be sitting at Dave's Pizza Parlor having pizza and talking and having a good time. I know you're looking forward to it, Scott. And you should be. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. We're lucky. We're not only lucky, we're blessed. That's a better term. Romans chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Read that to somebody who's wrapped up in religion, and they go, well, I, uh, maybe, I'm not sure. What are you talking about? They really have never seen this. Believe it or not, most people in churches hear 20 minutes from the pastor. He reads three or four verses, and he lectures them. And that's their message. Not a deep study of understand, understand, understanding things. Not something that they can apply to their lives. Not something they can take home and share with other people. No, here's some great verses. Now let's talk about it. And that's what happens. What they really mean. Really mean. Mm -hmm. What they really mean. When you bring this, bring this to somebody's attention who is very steeped in, in works, what does that really mean? Um, um, they don't have an answer. They really don't. And then just say that it's important. This is important. Let me, let me bring this up at this point. This is really important. It's important that we do not judge these people because it's easy to go, you're a moron. Let me tell you how it is, okay? Because the love of Christ is the only thing that's going to bring him in, not judgment. You can say, boy, it's interesting. I don't see it that way. Here's what I see it, and here's why, and here's the verses, and what have you. But you can't judge them that way in front of them if you want to talk to them. It's not a good thing. And we do that sometimes. One of the things that my employee was telling me, his mother went to her nephew's church. He's a pastor, too. The family's full of pastors. Went to the nephew's church, and after going through one service, she came back and said, I'm not going to go back. And he said, why? Because all they did was talk about how bad everybody else was. The whole service was about how bad everybody else was, and we're good. Ne what, a, you know, what a negative place to be. It was like, eh, it's not going to work. You, you share the love of Christ. You don't share the judgment. There's lots of people I run into that do not see grace. I just talk to them. I share the love. I talk about it. We, we inroad just a little bit about it, something there. You know, later on, they might ask again. Who knows? You never know. You just leave the seeds. But you share it out of love, not out of judgment. Okay? Satan is in most religions. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Very, very much so. Uh, let's see. Where am I at here? I get lost. 
Romans 4, did we read that for you? Four. Yeah, yeah, we're on that. Okay, verse 5. I, I need to use a pen, you know, these are great tools. <laughs> But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Jesus had the faithfulness to go through it. We believe it. And we're counted for righteousness. Do you feel per per perfected before God? I do. Do I sin? Oh, yeah. Ask, <laughs> ask Irma. I'm a master. I'm a master. I've got a, I got a doctor's degree in sinning. But yes. A couple of them. Thank you. <laughs> It's just, it's, there we go. It, at least she supports me. <laughs> the reality is this. In God's eyes, I sit perfected. When I do something I know I shouldn't do, I'm aware of it. And sometimes I go, oh, I didn't need to do that. I change it. Sometimes I go, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Let's go. Okay? But I'm still perfected in God's eyes. And I definitely try to reflect the love of Christ whenever I can. Okay? Opportunities come up all the time. Grocery stores, restaurants, and we'll tell you all sorts of places. We're always looking for the, the lonely senior who's eating by themselves in a restaurant to pay their bill. Because they're on their fixed income, you know. Yeah, Bob, you need to go some more restaurants <laughs> so we can take care of your bill. Tell me where you're going to. All right, I will. Oh, that lady, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> she comes in in a wheelchair. And we pay for her lunch, and she doesn't know who does it. <laughs> anyway, stand tall and positive in the reflection of God's love. Share that, give it away, and be positive in the reflection of God's love. So, so very important. I've got down, where is your focus? Do you act reconciled, or are you trying to win favor with God? How many times have you said to yourself, maybe when you are younger, maybe not now, but you said, God's never going to love me. Look at how bad I am. I'm terrible. Trust me, you're not terrible. You're normal. And God handles it. He set it up to be handled. Um, where is your joy? This confusion robs many people, not only the joy of their salvation, but causes them to lose salvation itself. If you spent your life trying to perform for God, and if I, if I, if I, do all of these things and God's going to definitely save me, you're not saved. You've missed the whole point. It is an acceptance of the finished work of Christ, not a performance that gets you to that point. Yes. People, people think that's so radical, especially religious folks. What do you mean? You don't have to do... No, I don't have to do anything. I do things because I have an opportunity to, but I don't have to do anything. Boy, that rattles the cages. That can get them going. But what if you did this? It wouldn't be good, but I don't have to do it. You can't do no, you can't. That's the reality, okay? That's where we're at. It's like telling God he didn't do it right. Yep, exactly. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Let's go there. I'll do the Scott thing. They're still flipping. Let me see if they get there. <laughs> All right. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. In believing. You have to believe and you get all these benefits. God doesn't hear you if you're not part of his, his family. If you're not a new creature in Christ, he doesn't even hear your prayers. It's only when you believe and become part of his family that these things happen. You know, with, with all joy and peace... Wow. That's a wonderful place to be. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Now, here we go. Here's some fruits of the Spirit. Yep. And, of course, we all handle all these all the time. I understand. <laughs> Galatians 5, 22. And the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, even at the fast food restaurants, gentleness, good, goodness, and faith. I just can't do that long-suffering thing when they mess my food up for like the third time. It is. <laughs> I, shouldn't, yes, I shouldn't go there to begin with because the food's crap anyway. And I go back because I'm hungry and I get some food and it tastes like crap. I'm like, oh, it's crap food again. It's just like I'm expecting something better next time I go through a McDonald's. <laughs> yes, it's exactly the definition of insanity. Not only is it crap food, but it's not what I ordered anyway. It gets so sad. <laughs> I go back over and over again. I can't learn. 
but we need to have joy now. That being said, I might, might point out that my wife lost some of her long suffering at a couple of these fast food places not too long ago. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> she, <laughs> she comes back on me. It's my fault because they messed up the order. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, gentleness. You know, be gentle with people. Help them when you can. Godliness, or goodness rather. Faith. Those are, those are characteristics we can share with the world. And when you do it, people are going to go, what's going on? What's this person want? What is this all about? You know? What do you want instead? You know, how many times have I, some, I've, I've said, uh, I'm going to take care of this. And they're like, what do you want? <laughs> I don't want anything. I want you to look at your spirituality. I want you to realize there's a God and a love in Christ. That's what I want. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad to pay for this meal or whatever it might be. People are very, very weary. You know? What do you want? What's going on there? Tell me about it. All right, let's go to 1 Thessalonians 1, 6. You guys haven't fallen asleep yet. That's good. See, that's why I like doing the first session. The second session, people are napping. I know. <laughs> that's it. Here we go. 2 Thessalonians 1, 6. And ye became followers of us, and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Even in difficult times, we can learn, we can grow, we can come study. You know, you're having a bad time. Take your Bible out and start reading something that Paul wrote. You're going to go, wow, yeah, that's good. I remember that now. Yeah, oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. It's going to make a difference. You know, even if your wife says, why don't you pray about that? And you're like, no, I'm not going to pray about it. I'm going to do it myself. I can handle this. She's like, you know, you might want to pray about it. No, no, I got this. Don't worry. I'm going to control here. <laughs> yeah. You guys, none of you guys do that, right? It becomes li logical for us to give back the love of God has shown us. This dynamic is totally opposed to what religion teaches. It's totally opposed. Religion doesn't teach that. Religion says, show up, do communion, do this, do tithing, do service, what have you, and then maybe God will be happy with you. Wow. That's a terrible place to be. How many millions of people are streaming out of these churches full of anxiety still? They're not happy. They're not at peace, that's for sure. They don't understand their position in God, so they're not at peace. They don't have a position in God, and they wonder about their future. They wonder about their family's future. Yeah, I have kids. I hope they're saved. I'm not sure they are, but we'll find out. I can keep discussing it with them someday, find out if they are. They, they, they certainly know the truth. Whether they actually embrace it, I don't know. Okay? So you never know. All right, let's go to my favorite verses. Here we go. Rom I know. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. And this is how we live today. This is how we take all this knowledge and information and turn it into something productive. It's really simple. I love the w what Paul teaches here. And when people see it and they understand the relationship to God, it all makes sense. This is a make sense set of verses here. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's reasonable to do things for God after what he's done for us. Is it not? I'm not going to take advantage of that. Boy, it is reasonable. Okay? And be not conformed to this world. Hmm. Don't get upset at those people in the fast food joints. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewing of your mind, that's what we're here doing today. Study, learn, grow, understand. The more you know, the more you understand, the more you can share. And the more peace you're going to have because you're going to see it all come together. It's a beautiful picture when you understand grace. It's extremely powerful when you understand all the little elements that come together and it makes for this grace relationship with God. Is that radical for most people? Totally. They have no idea. <laughs> they were taught differently in seminary, and they don't want to know anything more. Yet they live in misery. Yet if they get them to be honest with themselves, they're like, yeah, I'm trying to do the best I can for God. I'm working it. You're working it. It's already done for you. You can't work it. You can't do anything but accept it. And when you accept it, then you have the freedom and the joy to be in Christ. Stand perfected before God and share the love of Christ to the world. Even the people at the fast food joints <laughs> that never get the order right. 
<laughs> it is. It's, it's my it's my heel. What do they call it? My bad heel or something? <laughs> yeah, my Achilles heel. <laughs> anyway, verse three. For I say through the grace that is given unto me that every man that is among you not think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly. According to God hath dealt every man a measure of faith. We're all in this together. Don't judge each other. If you understand the basics of the gospel, you're with me. We're a team. Whatever you can do, you do. Whatever you can't do, you can't do. That's fine. I don't need to judge it. Nor does anybody else. We just share the love of Christ. Really that simple. Some of us can stand up here and talk, okay? I don't have any fear of that for whatever reason, okay? And, and some people are not comfortable talking. Everybody's different. Everybody has a different skill, okay? Other than being the most handsome guy in the room, that's the only skill I got. It's being able to talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, that's the reality of life, okay? We need to share it with each other, and we need to think of each other. All right? Verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, all members are here, not the same office. We don't all do the same thing. We all have different skills. So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members to one another. We're connected to each other. Share the joy. Not the negativity. Share the positiveness of your relationship with God. Let other people see that. And let them ask questions. Why are you always positive? I've had people say that. And I've had clients say that. You guys are always positive when you show up. Oh, yeah. And here's why. I'm at I, I always use the line, I'm at peace with my creator. It's a simple line. It gets them focused in a certain place. And if they want to know more, they ask more. If they don't, they're like, well, that's great. I'm glad for you. <laughs> and they move on. But it's true. Plenty of people have asked me over the years, why are you guys so positive? Because I'm at peace with my creator. I've got nothing to lose. I'm in great shape. My eternity is cemented. What more can I ask for? You know, maybe some tacos for lunch, but other than that, I'm good. You know? The no, not yet. I'm working on it. Yeah, it does. All right. Verse 5. So we being many, I think they one body in Christ and everyone members to another. This relationship and program with God is set up by him to bring us back to the family of God. Reason sin exists is for us to know what evil is. This lets us know that there's a choice to be made and we choose God. That's very important because without the choice, we would simply be robots and not make the choice because, we because of the love we have for God who created a path for us through Christ. It doesn't get any better than this. I've had people say, well, if you've got a loving God, why do you create sin? Here's why. Because without sin, we wouldn't know the difference. And we would just be robots. Choice. choice. Yep. We make the choice. And we choose to be with God, not have to be with God. Yep. And when we had that choice to be with God, it's because we love what he's done for us. And we appreciate it. And our eternity is in a great place. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And this is how we are to be positive and upbeat. I see, I see, yeah, she's getting up and giving me the hands. I saw her get out of that chair. <laughs> I feel that presence of her. That, ooh, it's going to be the hands. There we go. Ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Tough to do sometimes when you're not having a good day, but that's what he says, okay? Let your moderations be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing or anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. How many times have you been laying in bed at night, you're dealing with some kind of thing, you finally go, Wait a minute. God, you can handle this. I can't handle it. Help me out. Blah, 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 blah. And then you go to sleep. And then you go to sleep because you've given it up. I've done it at least twice. <laughs> read, read it to me here because I'll have my paper here. Oh. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are fair, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Yep. Where's your focus? Okay? Don't focus on the negativity and the problems of the world. I can't tell you how many millions of times being in business I've had crisis upon crisis upon, and, and every time God's handling it. I'm still standing. I'm still eating. I'm not 112 pounds. 
Things have been good. And I've had a lot of problems over the years. I mean, tons of them. It doesn't matter what they are. God has taken care of it. He has always blessed me through all these years and kept me alive and kept me moving forward and kept me going positively. Very, you know, he's very powerful. He certainly can do the trick. I can't. But he gets the job done. You know, very, very important. Grace must be the foundation of your faith. If not, you will focus on performing for God to win favor with him. And that is an ambassador sharing the gospel. When you do this, you will begin a process that will rob you of the peace and joy. Have you ever felt that? Like, oh, I don't have any peace. I don't know what's going on here? Okay? Focus in the wrong place. When your focus is off grace, the love of God, you will feel disconnected, fearful, and judgmental. This is why many Christians find themselves and wonder where the joy of their salvation is gone. I truly believe that we were meant to be both deliver and experience God's love and joy to the world. If we are not experiencing this in our lives, our focus is not in the right place. Okay? Learn something. Study. Focus in the right place. Get rid of the negativity. We have eternity wrapped up. Think about that. Ooh, we're smoking. I mean, we've got, we've got it all, exactly. We've got nothing to worry about for the future. Our work for Christ must be grace-focused. Our motive must be to give back what we have already been given. Not to win favor it works with God by reflecting God's love back to the world. This is how we are to act for Christ. Our focus must be on the gospel of God's grace, not ourselves. We all have met people that were focused on themselves. I got to have this. I got to have, somebody's got to do this for me. Somebody's got to do that for me. Whatever. It goes on and on. Wow. Tough way to live. Because guess what? You're going to be disappointed all the time. All the time. You're going to have moments of joy, but you're going to be disappointed and unhappy all the time. The love of Christ is where the joy is. Understanding that, accepting it, and living it is where the joy is. Even when we have times of trouble, we can see things in a positive light. This understanding is what spiritual maturity will bring. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 20. Now, if you don't feel special after reading this, I need to come smack you in the head. It's getting violent in here. Romans chapter 8, 28 through 30. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be comforted, to the Im conformed rather, to the image of his son, that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. Are you in the body of Christ? Conformed to his son? Absolutely. Done deal. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he then called, and whom he called, he then justi also justified, whom he justified, then he also glorified. <coughs> yeah, we're in great shape. Doesn't get any better. We are all living out what God would have us to be, our individual journeys. We are all traveling down different roads, but we will end up in the same place. We are called out, justified, and glorified. We're all going to be in heaven if you accept the finished work of Christ, if you understand and accept the gospel future's done for you. If the peace and joy of God are not, not real in your life, focus back on the simple understanding of the grace of God. Focus back to the joy and peace that fills your soul when you believe and by the faith accepted by the finished work of Christ for your salvation. It is the most significant point in your life. Okay? Where is the joy? Where is the peace? It's not performing to win God's fa favor with God, but rather it's God's love toward us that becomes our motivation for everything we do. When was the last time you sat quietly and let the love of grace move over your soul? Hmm? How many of us have done that? Yeah, yeah, not me. <laughs> I should do it, but I haven't. Just not quite. Maybe a little thinking before you sleep. That could work. I, I'll give you that. Um, what was, okay. We all need to slow down and let God be the center of our lives. We are no longer strangers, but in God's family. We are to act on God's behalf and reach a world where we have been given grace and the wonderful opportunity to deliver the message of unsearchable riches in Christ. Are you doing that? Where's your focus? Joy, peace, and love are elements of our standing with God that should rule our lives. Rule our lives, not just be a side thing. When we are faced with, these, with decisions, these elements should affect our decisions. God set us an example for us by giving us grace freely. We should always be motivated by that. I've got down in bold letters, so you need to remember this. It can't get any better. Thank God and keep your focus on reaching others with the message of the grace of God, which creates joy and peace in your life. Really that simple. Now let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this knowledge, for the understanding, for our position in Christ. 
We thank you that we can go to this class and the other classes like this and study and learn and then take this information home, give it to other people, and share it with the world. We ask you to give each of us an opportunity to share the love of Christ with somebody this week. <coughs> if they'd like to know more, share with them the gospel so they too can understand how they can be part of God's family. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's